welcome to Tuesday News Day, your number one resource for the entire week's worth of VR news. Huge information on what Valve's next VR headset or headsets maybe will look like, Sony officially announcing the next PSVR controllers, and some more information on the upcoming MMORPG Zenith. That and so much more, this is a jam-packed episode, so let's just get right into the news. The United States military is going full send with VR and AR technology. The Air Force and other branches have been using AR and VR for quite a while now. One more recent example is the US Air Force's contract with vr Engineers, or Virgineers, to supply the XTOL for Air Force applications like flight simulators. The XTOL isn't just any headset though, it's an 8K professional VR headset with all sorts of insane specs like true 8K resolution, 180 degrees FOV, automatic IPD adjustment, eye tracking, hand tracking, it's kind of nuts. It also costs $8,000 for one. And and speaking of such, I actually have one that Virgineers has lent me, so don't worry, I will be making a full video on that. But this segment is not about the XTOL and the Air Force. It's about the Quest 2 and the United States Space Force. SAIC, or Science Applications International Corporation, have been awarded multiple government contracts, including an $830 million contract with the Army to provide services for virtual reality simulations. Regarding the Space Force, though, specifically Quest 2s are being used to train these Guardians which is what the Space Force calls its service members, how to work on satellites using VR simulators. Obviously, this is probably the cheapest route to conduct training for something like satellite repair. Digital assets are obviously far cheaper to create and update than physical props to be used during training. And it's pretty cool that the same headset I play Population 1 on is being used to train Guardians to maintain satellites. Speaking of Population 1, I know I'm late on this, but cut me some slack. The Season 1 update dropped just last week for the game, bringing a ton of new free content, including map updates, new weapons like a katana, knife, and LMG, and some new skins. I had to mention it because really, this is how you support a game post-launch. And credit should be given where it's due. Big Box, the developer of Population 1, have been doing a pretty awesome job of bringing new, exciting content to the game. And I think that this should be a precedent moving forward for VR games. Good, high-quality content updates that improve the game while keeping things fresh. And honestly, there hasn't been a better time to hop into Population 1 if you haven't tried it, so go ahead. Now on to Valve. So I think if you've watched this channel for any period of time, you know that I love my Valve Index. It's my main headset, usually. And I've used it almost every single day since launch, which was two years ago nearly. And that's crazy to think about. But when you actually stop and take a look at the Index, you start to see the age compared to its competitors. The Index is still $1,000. It still has absolutely zero zero wireless capability, and Valve has been absolutely silent regarding concrete updates regarding the index. It's really frustrating to be honest, but this is Valve we are talking about and they do things on their own time, and the index still remains a top seller on Steam, so I suppose Valve really doesn't have any incentive to make massive changes. But if you're like me, I still want an updated index. <laughs> and we may have our very first look into what that next headset or headsets may look like. Of course, of course, like always, a disclaimer. These are only patents filed by Valve. These patents could very well be Valve's next headset, or these patents could literally amount to nothing to never see the light of day. I don't make that decision, Valve does. I'm just here to bring the information as it comes. So let's take a look into these patents. Filed in September of 2020, but recently published, there's a lot to unpack. Pretty much the patents cover what seem to be three versions of a VR headset. The first is basically a Valve Index on the outside, but it has a large section on the rear of the headset that the filing says can be used for either standalone hardware or to operate the headset wirelessly. In addition, there's an extra knob on the top of the headset for easier adjustment. In my opinion, this looks like an add-on for a current Valve Index or the current Valve Index design to bring it up to snuff with current offerings from other companies. Other than the bulky rear add-on and what appears to be a USB cable running from the rear to the USB port on the index, not much seems to be different. The next two images from the filings, though, are a little more exciting. This is a VR headset, but it has a very interesting rear section that I don't think I've ever seen before. This large rear portion of the headset is written to supply the same capabilities as the wireless slash standalone hardware that is 
in the previous filing, but it has a spring-loaded section that cups the lower back of the head. On paper, this looks to be really comfortable, but it is a completely new way for a headset to be designed. The third design looks pretty alien as well, featuring a similar grip on the back of the lower part of the head, but overall the look is a lot sleeker and appears to be lighter, as well as less bulky. Now, I have no idea which of these three designs, if any, will be used on any future Valve headset, but it does sort of all make sense. Oculus has proven that cheap standalone headsets that are jack of all trades are really what the mass market are looking for at the moment. So Valve working on some sort of standalone headset makes total sense, even if they just try. Now, of course, I have no idea what software or operating system Valve would choose to use, whether Android or Linux or something else. Linux has always been a Valve favorite, but given the current powerhouse that is the Quest 2 that runs on Android, it would make far more sense for future standalone VR headsets to also run some sort of kernel of Android to make porting games to a new store easier. But of course, that's legit all just speculation. Something I am definitely interested in is what sort of wireless capabilities these headsets have for more traditional PC VR experiences. Gabe Newell did say four years ago that wireless is a solved problem. And um, well, it's obviously not because the last time I checked, my index is still plugged directly into my PC and it's not wireless. So it doesn't sound like a solved problem. <laughs> something interesting too is the bulk of these headsets. They all look pretty massive, but they do accomplish something that other standalone or wireless headsets really don't. And that seems to be the weight distribution. The Quest and Quest 2 and Pico Neo all have a pretty fundamental issue. All of the hardware, batteries, cooling, displays, everything are all at the front of the headset, inevitably making the headset pretty front heavy and less comfortable than possible. Throwing the hardware in the trunk of the headset would make it bulkier and maybe overall heavier, but the weight distribution of the device on your head and face could make potentially a far more comfortable experience. But we'll just have to see. I am really hoping that Valve talks soon about their future projects. They've been extremely quiet lately, while just about everyone else in the industry seems to be moving at Mach 5. But whatever the results of these patents, you best bet that I'll be covering it here. And now it's time for a me. Break. You know, for a lot of people, the Quest 2 would be the perfect VR headset, if it didn't have Facebook's restrictions in place, that is. And that's where this tragic story unfolds in two acts. A post on Facebook reads, six hours ago, is there any way to jailbreak an Oculus Quest 2? <laughs> Five hours later, anyone know how to unbrick an Oculus Quest 2? Someone save this poor soul trying to accomplish a god's work only to be struck down by the Zuck. Sort of like the Quest's main boss. Uh, you know what? Back to the news. Sony has been firing pretty hard at the VR industry lately, just last week officially announcing that a completely new version of the PlayStation VR is coming to the PlayStation 5 uh, sometime in the future. <laughs> we didn't get any more details other than the fact that it is coming, and honestly, I find a lot of this kind of hilarious. Just a few months ago, PlayStation CEO said that VR won't play a meaningful part in gaming for years, but to be fair, in that same statement, Jim Ryan, that aforementioned CEO, did say, quote, PlayStation believes in VR. Sony believes in VR, and we definitely believe at some point in the future, VR will represent a meaningful component of interactive entertainment. Will it be this year? No. Will it be next year? No. But it will come at some stage. We believe that." End quote. And that's pretty fair. However, I did not expect any news regarding VR from Sony for years, but I was dead wrong there. We just got the announcement last week that PSVR 2 is coming, but we also got an announcement showing off the next controllers for PSVR. VR's next system, and they look really awesome. From what I can see, it appears that the light tracking, which is why the PSVR's original tracking was so terrible in the first place, is gone, and it's replaced with a tracking ring like every other headset's controllers that uses inside-out or outside-in tracking. Also, thumbsticks with an industry-standard VR controller button layout, that being thumbstick, two buttons, a grip button, and a trigger. So let's talk about that trigger, though. I recently got to use the PlayStation 5's DualSense controller, and it's probably the most advanced advanced controller I have ever used for typical gaming. It's really a joy. And the first thing I thought of is, man, I want my knuckles to have these triggers. They're just so good. And Sony are proudly putting the best features from the PlayStation 5's controller into these new PSVR controllers, namely the force feedback trigger. If you're pulling a trigger on a gun, it feels like a gun trigger with resistance. If you're driving a car, you can feel the motor far more intuitively than through typical rumble. It's really a game-changing experience, and it's amazing. And like I 
said, I immediately wanted it in VR, but it looks like we're finally going to get it. We have no idea when these devices are coming to market, but they are confirmed, so that's at least something, right? And I do truly believe that the extreme success of not only the Quest 2, but Quest 2 content has prompted Sony to push their announcements far sooner than what they were expecting. And that's okay with me. This is what competition looks like, my friends. You can dog console VR all you want, but right now it's the only contender that can really compete with Oculus at the moment. Moving on, the Pimax 8KX has received a pretty big update enabling 90 hertz at its native resolution, which is 3840 by 2160 per eye. Although this update is only applicable if you have an RTX 3000 series GPU. I mean, let's be real. There's no way you could run VR games at that resolution at 90 hertz on anything but an RTX 3000 series card or Quadro GPU. But it is still sweet to see Pimax updating their headset from that 75 hertz to 90 hertz. I should actually be getting a review unit on this channel for the AKX at some point in the near future, so I'll gladly test out this feature for anyone interested, but I'm not gonna lie, rendering two 4K panels in a VR application does sound pretty rough. We'll see how my 3090 handles it. Zenith, one of 2021's most anticipated VR games, has received its first real gameplay footage. This past week, the developers streamed about 30 minutes of gameplay of their new VR MMORPG, and I'm not gonna lie, it looks pretty good. Something like Zenith is definitely in demand for the VR community and it does seem like things are being done right here. While the graphics are pretty simple, the clean anime aesthetic certainly has its charm. During the stream, we got to see the overworld, which looks nice, as well as a dungeon played with other players, and we got to see some combat. Zenith is set to launch late 2021 for PC VR, Quest, PSVR, and PC, so you really have no excuse to not play it. <laughs> but now, it's time for question of the week. From Irisu AMV, will you be doing a face reveal without a mask? No. And that's question of the week. Make sure to leave your own below and I may just answer yours next. I also wanted to quickly update people on my Twitch and YouTube in general. I will be returning to Twitch next week and I have a bunch of really amazing projects coming up on my YouTube channel as well as a new channel that I think you'll like. So make sure you're staying tuned for those with the bell and the sub and all those things. I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas like Anders, Atomaly, Benji, Biz, Caution Ramen, CPCJ79, Decadon, Tom, Fur Trap, Fusion Oak, HCG Randon, I'm Naku, John, KR, Lucid VR, Mud King, Ridbo, That Brock Guy, Very Evil Shadow, Violet, and Zale. I couldn't do any of this without you. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.